Okay. So I'll talk about uh, some of our work uh, that uh, has been run on Perlmutter and um, also some of the development efforts uh, that have gone into NAMD to uh, utilize dense GPU nodes effectively. Uh, so NAMD is a scalable molecular dynamics program. It's uh, getting close to 30 years old now. Um, and uh, the emphasis in NAMD has traditionally been in parallel scaling of large systems, but uh, I'll talk about work today that has brought this back to um, running very fast simulations on uh, single GPUs or uh, single node uh, GPU dense uh, architectures. And so the, the first project I'd like to highlight uh, was a uh, Gordon Bell finalist in uh, 2021 um, with uh, Andre Triffin, uh, Daphne Gorgon, and uh, the PI on this was uh, Arvind Ramanathan from uh, Argonne. And uh, this was um, an interesting study uh, about the replication transcription complex um, that is responsible for uh, replicating and transcribing the, um, the viral uh, mRNA in, uh, inside uh, a human cell. And so this involved um, uh, multiple levels of modeling uh, where uh, we started with cryo-EM data and then um, we used uh, an intermediate continuum model uh, called uh, fluctuating finite element analysis to uh, try and resolve these, um, uh, these, these uh, rather low resolution cryo EM images into something that we could then uh, run with uh, all atom uh, molecular dynamics. And uh, so in order to drive this and uh, make it even faster. Um, we used uh, an AI uh, steering workflow. Uh, and uh, so I'm just gonna take you through the slides or the, the transitions here real fast. Um, and uh, and uh, the, the idea was that we could use this to um, uh, more quickly um, uh, resolve images uh, from the FFEA side and uh, then use these to actually feed back the entire uh, uh, modeling process. And uh, so on the uh, all atom side, we were using uh, our GPU resident version of NAMD that you know, we're, you know we've released as uh, NAMD3. And um, what was interesting about this is that this was actually a workflow that was working uh, to join uh, multiple compute sites together, um, including Perlmutter with uh, the Theta and Theta GPU and also a, a special AI test bed uh, at Argonne. And um, so the idea was to have um, this asynchronous workflow that then was was driven by uh, AI to steer the the choice of simulations to to sample the the more interesting and underrepresented uh, areas of uh, the the entire uh, conformational space. And so um, when we did this live, we were actually using uh, compute nodes of Perlmutter together with compute nodes of Theta GPU. And they both have similar architectures. Uh, Perlmutter has uh, four uh, NV-linked A100 GPUs per node. Uh, Theta GPU is actually assembled out of DGX A100s. And so those are eight A100 GPUs per node and uh, connected by an NV switch. And uh, so the other interesting thing I'd like to call out is um, the um, scaling uh, performance here that we got out of uh, the GPUs uh, versus uh, what we could get out of a traditional CPU-based system. So here, this, this plot is actually showing the crossover point in performance 
uh, between uh, for, for a 1.1 million atom system. And um, we so I've indicated a horizontal line here where uh, you know, that shows the performance on uh, TAC Frontera at 128 nodes. And we see that three GPUs is giving uh, equivalent performance to um, 128 nodes of, of a very fast uh, CPU-based system. So, so that's significant. There's a, a lot of uh, co computational power in, in these uh, dense uh, GPU uh, supercomputers that, you know, we you know, are continuing to develop our uh, code to, to unlock. So a second project that's been running on Perlmutter is uh, 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 been, being done, being pursued by Aaron Chan and Melee Siener. Um, and uh, so this is studying um, what they call here the most abundant photosynthetic organism on earth, uh, the uh, Prochlorococcus. Um, and uh, so here, uh, it, the, the idea is to model the rate limiting steps in uh, this, this uh, energy uh, producing system. And, um, and in order to achieve the time scales that they need to on this, um, they, uh, you know, the, 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 my understanding is that the setup uh, of the, the all atom data here was done with NAMD, but then they switched over to a coarse grained uh, Martini force field representation, and so uh, they're they're using Gromax, which you know implements this this really well, and um, uh, they're uh, running uh, just a, a single copy of this uh, per GPU, uh, and and so they've got an an ensemble of, of these systems that they're they're running together in parallel. Um, but you know, th this coarse grained representation, which reduces the system size to just 1.5 million um, particles, um, they, they can run this at uh, 40 nanoseconds uh, per day. Um, and uh, you know, for for aggregate uh, uh, you know, uh, time scales of uh, uh, 25 microseconds. So, so this is, you know, a, a lot of sampling that they can do by switching over to this, this representation. So um, now I'd like to go into uh, talk about the um, development work that we've done uh, to make NAMD really fast on GPUs. And of course, I'll start by just talking, introducing uh, molecular dynamics and that we're integrating Newton's equations of motion. So uh, we have to do these steps sequentially, um, but uh, we have a lot of calculation that we need to do to calculate the forces at each step, especially the non-bonded forces. And so if we look at you know, uh, the, the parallel distributed, uh, the distributed parallel workflow of NAMD, and uh, here take a look at how GPUs are introduced, um, well, what classic NAMD has done has been to offload the force calculation to the GPU, where we have to aggregate uh, enough position data together to, to make these uh, GPU uh, kernel launches uh, meaningful. Um, and uh, and uh, we've, we've been incorporating GPUs since, uh, since CUDA was first uh, released, so back in 2007. So uh, initially, uh, GPUs weren't nearly as capable as they are today. And we started with just uh, calculating the non-bonded uh, uh, work on, on the GPU. And eventually, we also ended up calculating the bonded uh, computes and uh, also the scalable parts of the PME calculation, the charge spreading and the force interpolation kernels for that. Um, and um, in, in addition, uh, we've got, uh, you know, the mechanism in NAMD so that if you're only running on a single GPU or uh, a single node that we can calculate uh, the entire, uh, you know, uh, work for PME on, on a single GPU. But, you know, in when we're looking at the, the parallel calculation, um, you know, 
the, the original idea was to use the GPU offload scheme and we're partitioning work between the CPU and the GPU where you know, the force calculations are uh, being done on the GPU. And then the, um, the, the um, uh, re remaining parts on the CPU include the integrator, uh, rigid bond constraints, and possibly whatever uh, you know, enhanced sampling methods you know, that you might be using. And this approach uh, worked really well up until somewhere around the release of uh, the Pascal generation and the voltage generation GPUs, when we found that uh, NAMD's uh, GPU offload approach was being increasingly CPU bound. Um, the, this, the, CPU, the work remaining on the CPU was becoming a bottleneck. Now, schematically, the idea here is that the GPU offload kernel um, you're, you're launching a force kernel here to calculate the forces. And then we had a mechanism in NAMD where we could write back real fast to host pin memory. And meanwhile, the CPU uh, is uh, there busy waiting for to see if, if forces are done. And as soon as forces are done, it can start into the integrating the next time step with those forces. So that's how we were getting overlap between the CPU and the GPU. And uh, as GPUs became uh, faster and more capable, um, again, we're, we're, we were seeing significant gaps in how, we, how much utilization of, of the GPU, the effective uh, utilization of the GPU that, that we were getting. And so, um, uh, you know, th then our approach was to develop a GPU resident version of NAMD, where now the, the atomic coordinate data all lives on the GPU between time steps. And you're basically have moved all of this uh, atom integration work and all the related stuff onto the GPU. And uh, you end up having very little uh, CPU uh, work being done at this point. So uh, we can see here now in the, in the profiles after the GPU resident version that we're using uh, the GPUs quite effectively. And uh, our, our timings bore this out, where it was, in some cases, more than doubling the performance of uh, the GPU offload version. And so then our next step was to extend this to GPU dense architectures. So, you know, think of, you know, us leveraging DGX like architectures, like you find as the nodes of Perlmutter, or uh, you, you also have that to some extent in Summit, and then, you know, also in, in the uh, Frontier uh, computer. And um, so here the idea was that, you know, we're now decomposing the entire problem between, uh, you know, several GPUs. And, um, and uh, but, you know, there's going to be some communication required between the GPUs. And so um, what we have to do then uh, within each time step is we're going to have to do a position multicast to populate these compute objects that are then being calculated on, on the respective GPUs. And then force reductions back to you know, the GPUs that are holding the patches. And so this means the GPUs need load store memory access uh, between these different devices within every time step. Okay, so that's why we need um, a, a system with, with these fast NVLink connections between the GPUs. Um, and um, since the uh, original version of this, we've uh, actually done some work to uh, improve the performance and scaling, um, where we've uh, done some things to uh, mitigate uh, some of the work that's still left on the CPU that includes this uh, so-called atom migration step that's updating the domain decomposition. Also, we find that PME uh, you know, can cause quite uh, a scaling bottleneck as well. And so we have some, some things in place to mitigate uh, that, that, those issues from PME. And um, so here's a performance uh, plot now um, with a, a, a 1 million atom benchmark system that we, you know, uh, regularly use to, to uh, you know, benchmark performance of NAMD. And, um, and, and here we're showing that, you know, the versus the original version, we're uh, 
uh, scaling quite a bit better um, for, you know, say like a full DGXA 100. Uh, again, uh, Perlmutter, uh, is effectively, you know, half the a node of Perlmutter is effectively half the the computational power of of a DGXA one hundred because there's there's just the four nodes and and we were already scaling quite well out to four nodes, um, but now we've these these optimizations have helped improve performance as well, and um, so just to take a look at uh, a larger size system, so this was a um, uh, a uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, coronavirus uh, spike protein system here of eight and a half million atoms. And uh, we see that we're uh, doing quite well and, and uh, the, the new code is uh, faster than you know, running this on, on 64 nodes of, of Frontera here in this, for this particular simulation. Um, so some of the other work we're doing in NAMD is uh, to support the upcoming exascale supercomputers at uh, Oak Ridge and Argonne. Uh, so for Oak Ridge, um, that these are um, AMD GPUs, and uh, AMD uh, went the route of developing uh, HIP that uh, has a very close correspondence to CUDA. And so it turns out that, you know, it was a little bit of work, but, you know, we can basically uh, have a hippified version of our code um, uh, based on our original CUDA kernels with just a little bit of extra um, uh, pre-processing macro magic. And, um, but otherwise we can leave the, the code path generally unchanged. Um, uh, now, for for the uh, for Aurora, on the other hand, um, this this is uh, going to be based on Intel GPUs, and um, so uh, our approach here is to uh, uh, implement this in Sickle, and we do have some automatic translation tools that can you know take our CUDA kernels and turn them into Sickle code, but it's not something that we can really support right now on. Um, the, the same GPU code path. So, so this is really effectively giving us a, yet another GPU accelerated code path through NAMD. Um, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, we're going to have to, you know, deal with eventually. Um, but anyway, um, that's, it's been a longer process. It hasn't been as easy to port uh, NAMD to Aurora. At the moment, we do have all of our GPU offload kernels ported, and we still need to uh, port the GPU resident parts of NAMD. Okay, so I'd like to end by acknowledging uh, uh, particularly the, the various uh, you know, people that we've either had here at the university or our, you know, partners at, you know, uh, different companies that have had their hands on the GPU parts of NAMD. So thanks. And I'm happy to take questions.